So let's move over to React and there when we build for production, we of course now also want to use our real backend URL. Now we got this URL now, so let's grab it here and insert it instead of localhost 5000, like this. So this is now where our application should be served at in the end and remove these trailing slashes here. So once we get this set up, we hopefully have a React app which is able to talk to our backend. So let's run npm run build again to create this production build. And then before we deploy this to a static host, I wanna test it locally. For that, we need a simple local server which can serve our static assets. And for this, you can search for npm serve to find an npm package which you can install globally on your system to simply serve any static files with it. So here I will run npm install dash g serve and on Linux and Mac, you might need to add a sudo in front of this to get the right permissions. And this will now install this serve package. Again, it's just a simple server which we can use locally to serve our built assets. So now cd into the build folder and simply run serve. And this will now serve your production ready React application. So it is a way for us to test this application. It's served on localhost 5000 here. So let's enter that and let's see whether this works. Now it finds no users initially, which makes a lot of sense because we haven't created any. So let's now in the end go to authenticate here and let's try signing up with one. So here we'll enter max and pick an image of course. Here it is. Enter an email address and a password and click sign up. And this seems to work. Here is our user. Now if I click on the user, I could not find any places for the user, but if I try to create one, Marine Plutz, a great place in Munich, I'm sure you know this place by now. We can configure all of that, click add place. Now when we go back here, I see we got kind of a strange style here, I would say. Uh, if I reload, it's gone, not sure. It's always there when we navigate to this page. Simply a styling issue though, it does work. And we see our place here. We can also view it on a map. Let's try editing it. Looks good. And let's try, before we delete it actually, let's go to MongoDB and have a look into our database to see whether it's stored in the right database, which should be Mern Prod. So let's go to Mern Prod. And in Mern Prod, in places, we have one document with one place and we have one user and that user has a reference to our place. And if we now go back here and we delete this place, this works. And if we go back to MongoDB, therefore in the places collection, this should be empty now. And on users, our reference should be gone. And it is. So this works. Our production ready React app works. It talks to our backend. Now we should be ready to also deploy this React app to a static host. Now, just as for the node code, there are many hosts you can choose to deploy a static application. I go with Firebase Hosting because there we also can get started for free and all we need is a Google account, which we already should have by now. But again, if you search for static hosting, you find plenty of alternatives. Now, you can go to Firebase Hosting Docs to learn more about it. And as always, you also wanna check out their pricing to understand what costs you money and what doesn't. The hosting we will use here will be free, but again, if you're running a bigger application there and so on, then this might not be the case. So how do we host an application with Firebase hosting? For that, we can click on get started here on the left. And we learn that first of all, we have to install the Firebase CLI. So just as we had to install a Heroku CLI, we need that. And you can click on your button to simply install it on your system to see the steps you need to run to install it on your system. So simply make sure you do that. You install the Firebase tools here, as it's called, on your system. And once you're done with that, you can run Firebase init. However, and that was part of the installation actually, you also need to sign in. So you need to run Firebase login and log in with your Google account there. So once you ran Firebase login, you can run Firebase init in the project you wanna host. So in my case, in this front end folder here. 
And there, make sure you're in the frontend folder, not in the build folder anymore. So navigate into the root frontend folder and run Firebase init. Now it will ask you which features of Firebase you want to use, and here we only need hosting. So navigate to that, hit space, and then confirm with enter. Then it asks you whether you want to create a new project or use an existing one. You can choose create a new project here and simply enter a project name into the field once asked for it. Here I will go with an existing one, but you can, as I said, create a new one. As a next step, you're asked what your public directory should be. The default is public, but in our case, the files we want to deploy, and that is in the end what it's looking for here, are in the build folder. So enter build instead. You're then asked whether you want to configure this as a single page app and you should choose yes here so that all requests on the server are redirected to that index.html file. As a next step, it asks you that it already found an index.html file if it should overwrite that and there you should choose N for no. And thereafter it initializes this and you should be done. Two new files are added with the general configuration. And one important note here in the Firebase JSON file is that rewrites entry. In the end that says for any request sent to your backend server, so whatever URL you're entering there, it will always serve the index.html file because in there we have React and the React router which parses the URL and then renders the right component. And that's important for single page applications. The location where you are serving them always needs to return the index.html file, that single page you're having, because you're not resolving URLs on the server side, but instead you always want to return your HTML file with your React app in it, so that the React app and the React router can do something with the URLs. That's why this configuration is important here. With this configured, if we go back to the docs, we see that now as a next step we can run Firebase deploy. So let's run this command here, Firebase deploy, and this will now push our files in the build folder to a host, to a server provided by Firebase. And once it's done, it will also give you the URL where you find that. Of course, before you run that command, make sure that you ran npm run build with your latest changes applied. I did this already, but in case you didn't, run it first before you deploy. And thereafter you find your hosting URL. So let's copy that and open it in a new tab. And this is now our application. And you can already tell that it works because it fetched the user I created before. We can also try logging in here. Yeah, that looks good. Still got that strange styling bug here, but besides that everything is working just fine. And with that, we got our application up and running on two separate services, Heroku for Node.js and Firebase hosting for React. And I would say that this is the most common way of deploying such MERN apps. You want to split your REST API from the front end because that REST API you built, which is served through Heroku, really can be utilized by any client. You're not restricted to your React front end. If you serve this on a standalone server, you can easily connect other clients to it as well. Now, of course, that technically would also be possible if React is served by the same server. But the more you serve from the same server, the more requests hit that server. So splitting the apps on two servers also makes sense from a performance perspective. Users who are just visiting your React app, who are not doing something that hits your database and your REST API, will therefore only hit the static host and therefore you split the amount of requests and which servers the requests reach. So that would be another argument for using multiple hosts. Nonetheless, in the next steps I also want to show you how you can deploy everything to one server.